Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at an interesting but extremely rare phenomenon called VFR corridor. Uh, what's a VFR corridor? Let's uh, take a look. So basically, a VFR corridor is where, if I understand uh, what they're talking about in the far and the aim, basically what they're trying to do is come up with a nice, safe way that you can move VFR traffic in and out of a zone that does not require air traffic control. Uh, this goes back to the very, 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 very early days of when they were start building the early uh, Bravo airspaces. Now, the interesting thing with these is there's not a lot of them left. Uh, we had to actually go all the way out here to San Diego in order to actually find one. So what we're going to do is we're going to fly through this corridor, but we're going to take a look at exactly what it means. So let's go ahead and zoom in just a teeny tiny bit so you can kind of uh, grasp what's going. By the way, we're on the San Diego tech chart for those of you who are curious. So we're going to be taking off from Imperial Beach. Uh, we're going to fly upwards into the San Diego Bay Zone. And then we're going to go through... Uh, that's a technical term to indicate a significant amount of nasty, 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 nasty airspace we have to kind of um, pull ourselves through. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go up here. We're basically going to follow this bay along this little dashed line here. And you can see that it's going to take us through this little tiny little uh, nook and crook kind of a thing like that to this position here where we're basically going to be over the departure end of, you know, San Diego. So after that point, we're basically going to go ah through this little tiny smidge right here again. This is how dangerous this is. Or for much, much smarter people, we go above 2,900 feet in less than 4,800 feet and basically choo-choo through here, pop out in Mormon Temple, and then make our way all the way up to our destination airport up top. Now, the VFR corridor itself, let me go take a look at a closer look at this thing. It looks a little bit like this. Uh, basically, we hit this point right here. We're supposed to follow along, cross the bridge, again, watching out for this. Notice available altitudes are between 3,300 and 4,700. This is one of the few times when we're going to pick an altitude that's a little bit safer to go with. And we're going to cross this position. Again, this is the M uh, Mike Zulu Bravo 84 radial here after Mike Zulu Bravo, this mission bay of VOR. We're going to have to dial that one in so we know when we cross that line. And then basically, we pop through. We'll come back over here, and we're going to kind of... <laughs> Oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. So we're going to very, 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 very carefully kind of wedge our way between 4,800 feet and 2,900 feet. So I'm a huge fan of 3,000 feet. And 3,000 feet, if you look really, really carefully, is completely legal through this entire zone. So this is going to require a lot of fancy navigating, which is why I picked an aircraft that I would not consider fancy for the purposes of navigating. It just looks cool. So um, that's exactly where we're going to go with it. So let's go ahead and get this all pre-selected and uh, ready to rock here. So I'm going to pick 3,000 feet is going to be the uh, speed I desire here. And again, uh, when we do this, it's going to be a little on the chaotic side. So it's going to keep it very, very, very interesting for us the entire flight, which is why I like these kinds of things. Um, these VFR corridors, by the way, are kind of rare. Uh, there's not really as many of them as they used to be. Uh, the reason being is, again, airspaces have changed. So uh, they've created something called the VFR transition route, which is what we're going to see a little bit later on. Let's go ahead and push that throttle all the way forward. I love this plane. You got to pull back just a tiny bit one during takeoff. This is not like a traditional tail dragger. You know, you just basically fly the plane off the ground. It's not like you go, oh, see that one? See that? That's how you know the tail is getting light on you. Maybe just fly the plane off the ground. You gotta love that. So, 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 so easy to operate this plane. There we go. Get ourselves a little tiny bit of altitude. And again, we need nothing crazy here, but uh, one thing we do need is we need a lot of altitude. So we're now going to go swing this way. Again, we are completely within this particular zone here. Uh, we have a good amount of coverage as far as uh, what we need to be able to achieve. And basically, the thing here is we just basically fly over the bay. That's it's kind of the concept of this particular corridor. Obviously, this is a VFR only corridor. You're not going to be doing this in IFR conditions. If you're in IFR, they're just going to bounce you around the way that they normally bounce you around. So our goal here is to get ourselves up as close as we possibly can to about 3,000 feet. Uh, once we cross 3,000 feet, we have to basically, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, stay at that 3,000 feet as we extremely, extremely carefully and uh, basically narrowly uh, rip our way through the other spaces that happen to be in that zone. So we're not quite into the corridor yet. Uh, the corridor itself, if you take a look down at the uh, G1000 display, is basically when we cross into that line, if you look really carefully, I'll go ahead and stick my head down so you can see that. Basically, you can see that little kind of a fuzzy line where that uh, class Delta airspace is about to run out. That's where it starts, and this corridor is going to take us completely down this particular zone here. I'm getting dinged and donged at here, which all makes sense to me. I've actually got the good old-fashioned uh, electronic flight bag going for this particular flight. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is just in order to facilitate a little bit more situational awareness. Again, uh, we just want to be able to concentrate exactly on where we're going, and we really got to be keeping our head out the window this entire flight as we're approaching it. So what I'm going to do now is, uh, as we're kind of cruising along, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go pop up the uh, sideways view here so you can kind of see what's going on. Ready? Go. Got it. So you can see uh, very clearly how uh, we're just crossing into the San Diego Bay now. 
And what we're going to do is we're basically going to hover along the edge of the San Diego Bay as we slowly, slowly make our way up. Now, the incredible thing is we're basically going to be threading the needle between several different positions. You can hear I'm digging like crazy here because I'm crossing about 15 different airspaces. So obviously, I got to be very mindful of that. So that's all taken care of. I'm just going to keep that open in another window right now so I can kind of follow it as I go. And we're about 2,500 feet, doing really, really well, obviously. <laughs> Look. Hello there. How you doing? You can see we oh you no know, nothing like uh, North Island uh, Halsley Field right there, and then obviously San Diego International. Start swinging around a little bit. We're about 2,700 feet. And we're just gonna have to get to the hard part. So now we're gonna have to cut really, really carefully here because we really, really, really have to thread this needle. We can technically come a little bit over the ground uh, based on the actual chart itself. We can basically run the city over just a tiny bit if we had to. Uh, it looks like uh, the post-apocalyptic version of San Diego there. I don't know, maybe that's what San Diego looks like every day. I don't know, never been there. All right, and again, there should be some major highways that we could use to kind of help us out. I'm going to push the nose down a little bit as we uh, kind of carefully, narrowly uh, kind of zing our way through this right here. Myself a lot of down trim. I don't need to be going quite that fast. There we go. Back to the throttle back. I think we're supposed to be doing 120 or less here with this aircraft, but oh well, we're making good time, so I'm not complaining too, too much. All right, we are now well, well within the VFR corridor. And we're just going to carefully kind of zigzag through. Like I said, I'm amazed they allow us to do so much of this. I imagine if I was a helicopter or something like that, this would be very, very nice to have. The other thing I imagine is uh, you'd want to turn on every single light you have on this aircraft to make yourself as visible as possible, just so uh, people who are coming the other way can kind of see you very, very clearly as you kind of narrowly kind of sneak your way through this airspace here. And I love the fact that I'm doing 140 knots right now. That's, that's, that, that, that's special. <laughs> imagine if I push the throttle all the way forward, I could probably get even faster. All right, doing okay, doing okay. Taking a look very, very carefully here. We're going to get to the narrow part of the airspace now. This is where the major... Oh, there's the highway. So there's Interstate 5, and there's going to also be the other interstate, which is going to be Interstate 163. That big long one right there that you see, the east-west one, that's going to be Interstate number 8. Uh, when we cross Interstate 8, that's going to be putting us pretty much in position to start flying kind of north. Easy. I don't want to go too far into that zone. Uh, that waypoint is a good, valid waypoint, but like I said, it's going to put us a little close to the upper edge of where we're not supposed to be. All right, we're about to pass right over K-San. Take a look at this. Yeah, that's an international airport right there. So because of the way this is configured, it basically allows you to overfly an international airport, which I don't know about you, but I think that's incredibly crazy. I can't believe they cut something like this out of here. This, 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 this is this is pretty intense. This is pretty intense. All right, so we're going to kind of hang here. So there's San Diego International. We're passing over that right now. This is considered still part of the VFR corridor. Do you see how crazy this is? And you can probably imagine why they started getting rid of these because obviously, uh, look what I just did. I feel sorry. Again, I don't technically have to be talking to air traffic control right now while I'm doing this. Just think about how not cool that is for the good folks down there who are just watching me go by here at 3,000 feet. All right, we're going to come swing to the right. So on our right wing, we're going to see Route 8, which is that big one right there. And now once we cross that line, in just a moment, we're going to be passing into the zone that's going to be directly north of it. Yeah, we're just kind of following Route 2, I think, is the one they do. Again, I don't live out here, so excuse me if I get all my highways wrong. All right, nice and careful. So we're just about to cross out of this VFR corridor in just a moment. Uh, how do I know? I'm taking a look. I've got the G1000 to help me out. I'm also looking out the window as much as I can to try to concentrate on where I need to be here. A little more altitude. I want to keep it right around 3,000. And we're just about ready to pass out. <laughs> Right? Now remember, there's two different sets of airspaces we're going to be trying to thread here. There's one that's going to be right over here, that's Montgomery Gibbs Executive. Basically, that's the Delta airspace, it's 2,900 feet. We're also going to try desperately to stay below 4,800 feet, which is San Diego's own airspace. Like I said, uh, this is uh, definitely something you'd want flight following for. This is not something you'd want to take a chance at, just kind of going and figuring it out on your own. We're just about outside of the corridor now. You can see uh, right over there, we just passed outside the corridor, and now we're safe. We can actually probably thread the needle between these two airports uh, pretty aggressively here. And again, I'm not the guy who designed these things. I'm just the one who has to fly it. Whew. Oh, man. Imagine doing that every day. One, two, three. <laughs> 
get a little bit of time going here now that we're on ice and not we're still underneath san diego's airspace as incredible as this sounds so we're just going to kind of hang out over this way now we're going to be passing through another very very high airspace there's actually a vfr uh, not a vfr there is a uh, jetway directly above us that we're about to kind of sail underneath here and again you can just imagine how not fun this is in a real airplane when you're dealing with you know the radio and pretty much everything else under the sun here go almost to our destination gotta love the fact we can just uh, speed up time a little bit here for the purpose of demonstration but it works pretty well so anyway uh, that's an example of a vfr corridor uh, like i said there's not many vfr corridors left important things you got to remember about vfr corridors is since you're going to be underneath bravo airspace you have a 200 knot limit as far as speed goes uh, the other thing you want to kind of keep in mind that when you're operating one of those is the fact that because you are right next to everything just because it's a vfr don't talk to air traffic control does not mean it is recommended not to talk to air traffic control uh, one of the things you could run into, of course, in the real world is the fact that people don't see you, things can get in the way, again, things can get very, very messy very, very quickly for you, very calm, so you want to be very mindful of that. So there's our destination, it's our radar for now, this is uh, Kellen Palomar. And again, um, this is not a recommended approach procedure, but the purpose here, like I said, was to show you the VFR corridor. In the real world, by the way, they have a 2,800 foot delta, which we just went sailing directly into. So in this particular course, uh, we would have to have kind of let them know the fact that, hey, we're coming. Isn't that? <laughs> I love that. That's fun. Terrain. Terrain. Don't sink. Pull up. Pull up. Too low flaps. Too low flaps. Too low flaps. Is a good flaps. I've never heard of too low flaps. Have you ever heard of too low flaps? I've never heard of too low flaps. <laughs> that's fun. I'm going to pop down a couple notches of flaps and we'll bring this one around. Next time we're going to take a look at one more kind of VFR special weirdness here. And that's going to be the one that is dedicated to basically flying with air traffic control. It's going to be the only one of its kind that you require clearance for it. And it also has a bunch of weird little visual things that you have to kind of watch out for. <laughs> that would be iFly GPS. It is a very, very uh, picky, picky, picky piece of software, especially since I'm lining up for a landing. Jeez, man. Now that is a non-standard traffic pattern I've ever seen one. One fun thing with this plane, uh, for those of you who have not tried this one out, is um, it is a tail dragger. And when people try to land it, they try to think like it's a 172, and you can just like lift the nose up and like put it down softly. It, it doesn't work that way. You have to treat it like a tail dragger. So like right now, looking out the nose, this is pretty okay if I wanted to do a two-wheeler. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna transition to a three-wheeler. The nose up and then the plane just stops flying. It's one neat thing about this plane. You ready? Man, this thing drifts. There we go. Nose up. Other than that, enjoy.